Hey there. If you're using Chroma DB with RAG or, or any other use case, debugging can be a bit on the frustrating side. Back when we were just starting to build out Olama, I was building a simple RAG tool for one of the examples. I remember I was just starting to work with Chroma before really understanding how it worked and I hit an issue. And I wasn't sure if the problem was with my query or with getting the data into Chroma. I had no visibility into what Chroma was doing. And so I, I used the API to try to pull info out, but again, I wasn't seeing anything. I wasn't sure if the problem was my code or my query, or maybe the data just wasn't in the database. What I needed was a way to see what was inside Chroma DB to see where the problem was. There are a few stages we can go through to find out what's going on. First, we can look at the base structure that Chroma DB uses, and that's SQLite, which is pretty interesting. Using SQLite means we can easily run the system with a minimal number of files. And depending on the use case, accessing data in SQLite can be faster than accessing the same data in the file system, depending on how the database was architected. There are a large number of tools for working with SQLite. SQL Pro and Base come to mind as really easy tools to work with SQLite. But to see if your data is there requires a little bit of spelunking and, and even better, some knowledge about the workings of SQL and maybe even the structure of the Chroma DB database. But I can open up one of those tools, point it at the SQLite database used by Chroma and start poking around the database. After a few tries, I can find the data that corresponds to what I had added to the database. But what if you want to go further? Well, another step you can take is to just use the REST API straight from the browser. But there's only so much you can do there with a few clicks. So if you start Chroma locally using port 8000, then you can probably just go to that URL and tack on slash docs to the end. And you see the API docs. For most of these endpoints, you can click the try it out button. So I can click on the list collections endpoint and click try it out. Don't enter anything and click execute and I get a list of collections. So that's good, but can I see if there's any embeddings in there? Well, not super easily. Go down to the query endpoint and specify the ID of the collection, which I got from the previous endpoint. If you execute it now, you get an error about embedding dimensions. It's a little confusing, but it's because it's looking at the word string as an array and doesn't know what to do with it. We need an embedding to go in there. To deal with this, I created a simple script on my Mac that embeds some text and adds it to the clipboard. The reason I did this on a Mac is that's what I use. But hey, we have AI. So I used one of the programming models to translate it to something that's going to work on Windows as well as on Linux. Those are in the repo technoevangelist slash video projects. I can't verify that they actually work because I didn't actually try it on those other platforms. But now on the Mac, I can run Namek embed, what is the Vision Pro, and paste that into the query and execute. I get a response and can see the most related entries. Okay, but that required a bit of work. Is there a tool I can use to get the info more easily? Well, the best tool I found, okay, the only reliable tool I found was something called Chroma DB Admin. And that's one of the problems. There isn't a great tool to work with vector DBs in general. I started working with Milvis and there's a tool for that. I'm sure there are tools for other databases as well, but not a, a universal tool that exists. So that's not entirely true. I did stumble on one that makes the promise of becoming a universal tool, but for now, it has lots of issues. And I had it working for a second and then it blew up. I'll tell you more about that because it has a lot of promise if they can fix a few little things. But other than that, there isn't one tool to manage them all because there is no standard way of working with vectors. Everyone's doing it a little bit different. Okay, so Chroma DB admin. You can find this on GitHub at flanker slash Chroma DB dash admin. Just clone it locally, then run the appropriate tool for you. I like using bun, so I'll do bun install and then bun dev. And now I can open up the web interface at the URL shown. 
you might have to point it to your database and then a collection. But pretty quickly, you see all your documents in your vector database. And you see all the components of each doc. So here's an entry, and I can see the source text, the embedding, and the metadata. I can't change anything here, but I can find other documents that are similar to this one. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, I mentioned that there was another tool. Now, if videos only had a lifetime of a few days or maybe a few weeks, I might not even mention this, but they're around for a little bit longer. So by the time you see this, it may have become the most awesome tool ever. And this will be an interesting historical record. But for now, Vector Admin is interesting, but awkward, and hopefully soon will resolve some issues and will become incredible. The idea is to have a tool that manages all of your vector databases, whether they're Chroma or Pinecone or a few others. My issues are that the install for now takes ages. And then it requires this weird overhead of organizations and workspaces. And I didn't really see any benefit in doing that. But you create one of each and then you can add your databases and it supports Chroma but it didn't seem to support local Chroma databases. It will work with Chroma in Docker though, just not if you run the Chroma command locally on your, on your local file system. Okay, so I spun up another database in Docker and it worked fine, but then I tried to add that local one again and overrode the Docker config and, and, and now I had nothing. So I tried removing the workspace and recreate it, but that didn't help. So I removed the org and then was booted out to create a new new org. But to do so, I had to create a new user, but I couldn't because I already had run the onboarding. So I was stuck and had to reinstall. I would think this could be solved by hiding that whole orgs and workspaces stuff until the benefit of that overhead shows up and then make it a bit easier to add multiple databases. I was... I was really excited about the opportunity to sync vector databases because it's gonna be useful for me. So I hope this starts to work better in the future. There are also a lot of features around editing documents in the database, which is really cool, but that requires recreating the embeds. And the only option for that is to use OpenAI. If you had used Olama to create the embeds with Namic Embed, this isn't gonna help much. These are all just some simple polish that's needed, as the rest of the product is pretty great. And I'm super excited to see where he goes from here. Now, I understand the motivation for the org and workspace overhead. It feels like a, an enterprise kind of feature. And, and those enterprises, well, they're the ones who are likely to be the folks who will pay for such a product. I just hope it all gets tightened up a little bit. So those are the tools that I know about to work with Chroma DB. Did you know about any of those? Do you know of any others? Oh, I'd love to know about that. Do you think this tool is useful when working with Chroma? I would love to hear what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for being here. Goodbye.